welcome back to Late Night Gamer and we are still playing Unconditional Surrender Case Blue. So if you think the map looks a little bit more col colorful than usual, you are right. Because I decided to switch out the map I printed out with the map that comes in the game. The colors are much more clear than my uh, printer. So um, I have just limited the area of play with these white pieces of paper here. Before we start I need to make a correction. The Panzer unit I refitted last turn as the German player. Uh, I can't do that because it still had a low supply marker on. So I've been doing something wrong also when I the, uh, when I refitted the first Panzer was that I refitted it even though it was in low supply. A unit has to be in full supply in order to be refitted. And that makes sense. I mean, people has to get there and equipment has to get there. So, um, and even though this Ford Panzer actually was in supply at the moment I did the refitting, it was not in supply during the supply uh, during the supply check phase and hence it got a counter and if it has a counter there's no go with refitting so let's reduce the Ford Panzer and still keep that low supply marker on it will need to stay on until the next supply check which is at the end of the German player turn this round so um, yeah uh, I'm not sure how this is going to, to work out for the Germans so we are in the weather phase according to the scenario setup September, which we are in now, we are in September 1942. We don't have to roll because whatever we roll, it will be fair weather. Yeah, I'm just going to put that weather marker in the fair weather box on the old map, but uh, that's because there's no. Um, well, I I folded the map so the weather track is is folded away on the map from the original game or from the full game. So fair weather. Let's remember that economy phase. I already set up the production points, one for Italy and Hungary, two for Romania, 12 for the Soviets and eight for Germany. We can just have a peek here and the only event that's available is the, is the dreaded tank event marker for the Soviets. There is an upgrade available later on and the Soviets have two armies and one air force that can come on while the first sponsor for the Axis player is in the mobilization box. With that in mind, the Axis player probably wants to uh, keep some production points aside, two of them, I think, so that he can mobilize the first sponsor at the end of the turn. But we are now in the operation phase, and we need to consider what the Axis player should do. The situation is very, very difficult. And the um, Operation Blue hasn't turned out the way it should have for the Axis player. They have come to a full stop here in the north. And the Soviets are even building up a massive force there that are threatening Kushk and Kharkov. They're actually threatening to win the game. So I'm <laughs> so And these two field armies are not enough to stop them. That leaves us with a problem down in, in the south here, because my air force is totally exhausted. And without the air force, I don't think I can take any of these positions, because now the Soviets have an air force available. So there are no good options there. One thing I can do, though, uh, is to attack here and try to drive away that fort army. If I am able to do that, then I could advance and force the Soviets to divert some forces to uh, to stop me. But that's a slim hope. Uh, the It's difficult to attack across a strait. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to pay one production point for Romania and give the fourth army eight movement points. And with that, I'm going to initiate an attack across the strait on the Soviet Union army, that is here, the fourth army, the Soviet's fourth army. So that's going to cost me 4 points to attack, 1 for attacking and 1 before it, because it's a clear hex and plus 2 because I attack across a straight. So the question now is if the Soviets are going to, to commit a uh, air support or a ground support from the air force. Yeah. I'm not going to commit ground support, they get a minus 2 across the straight and 
I don't think they can do much. They can force me to retreat, but... Ah, no, I'm not afraid. Here goes. That's not a good roll for the Axis player. There's no national modifier, modifier for the Romanians. They do have to take a minus, though, because they attack across the straight. And they take a minus two. <laughs> and that's it. So they get... Oops. So they get an attacker stopped. If no, oh that's interesting, if no the Soviets had committed their support, it would have been an attacker attacker attrition, meaning uh, Romanians had to be retreat uh, had to be reduced. But it's not, so attacker is stopped. Yeah, that means that the attacker is stopped, the Romanians are spent, and the remaining points are gone. See my main striking force is the two panzers, and one is out. And the other one is reduced, so after this turn they will both come on. And, uh, provided I can keep this in supply though. I can't win this game by being defensive, that is pretty clear. So I really don't need to take out these units, but... Because this is not an uh, objective. But Stalingrad is an objective, and if I move east I need to be able to trace a supply line, and the supply lines goes along these railroad lines here. Actually, this railroad run exits the map along with this line here, so they are not connected, meaning that a supply line from Stalingrad through Voronezh here and to Kursk, um, that, that's not a continuous line, so that's not good. The only supply line runs west in this direction here, so this is the key point. And actually, they are they are not they are, they are weaker around Rostov than they are around Voronezh. If I take Rostov, they will have to divide the forces from north. Okay, that seems like a plan. How to take Rostov? Well, the guards are pretty tough. They have a plus one and are in a good defensive position within Rostov. His air force is provide support. So if I take out the thirty seventh. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try to take out the 37th. Let me use the... Or should I assault the 12th? I could assault the 12th. They will add on this and may also add the tank marker. Yeah, oh, damn. It's pretty hard to... <laughs> ah, these strategic decisions are so difficult and game determining. And I love it that the game has them in. That you really have to make choices that matters. There are so many considerations in this game. I'm decided that I want to take out the 37th. The 12th I think is too difficult because of the mountains. So I'm going to try to mount an attack on the 37th Soviet infantry army. I'm paying a German production point to activate the 6th and I'm going to make a mobile attack on the 37th. That mobile attack is going to cost me 2 so that should put the 6th Infantry Army, yeah, down to 6 points. Okay, attacking here, and I don't have anything to commit with. Question is, should the Soviet commit? Well, the Germans are going to attack at a plus 2, so that's a bad odds. Let's see if we can make them attacker stopped. Instead of flying an air sortie, I can commit the tank marker. Oh, that's nasty. I'm committing this. Making these guys tanks, giving them a plus two. So they have equal out the modifier for the attack. And there, is, there are no negative modifiers because it's in the open. So that leaves us with the roll. Okay, 5-4. Okay, modifiers. Germans get plus two for being Germans. And the Soviets get plus two, plus two because they are no certainly tanks. And there were no air support. So that's it. And there is a clear no effect. The Germans are keeping at it, using two more points. Should the Soviets commit uh, air support? Yeah, let's do that. Let's have the Soviets commit one air support. Germans get plus two for being Germans and the Russians get plus two for their air support. No effect. So we have four points left of attack and I'm going to continue. And this time I'm not going to commit the last air support from the Russians, I'm going to save that. Saving that, so no modifiers. That's a bad roll for the Germans. 
So the Germans get plus two, plus two for being Germans, and there are no modifiers on the Soviets, and there is still no effect. I have only one left attack now, for my two last points, and still Soviets are not flying, they, late, they, they lost their support. Oh! <laughs> I don't know how this is possible, but every time the, Rus uh, the, the Germans roll well, the Soviets also roll well, so... Plus two for Germans and nothing for these guys. But that is actually a defender retreat. Finally something happens. Yes, this tank marker was spent during this combat and it goes back in back on the turn track. It becomes available next turn. The Air Force, five sorties. The 37 now needs to retreat. I think it will retreat back where the Air Force is across the river here. An air force and a ground unit can exist in the same space. The Germans are spent, but they will advance. I'm going to initiate the the third uh, Romanian army here, paying the Romanian production point. And I'm going to attack the 12th, which is in the rough. I'm going to attack into a rough, that's two for the rough, and one for attacking. So that should be five and Romanians they don't have anything to add and no the last sortie is not going to be flown now either <laughs> it's an absolutely horrific roll there are no modifiers oh yes there are there's some minus for the rough <laughs> but one is as, is as slow as it goes so this is actually an attacker stopped which is just terrible. I mean, yeah, it's just terrible. The Romanians uh, have to be spent. But now I have to activate the 17th. Paying a production point, Germans are down to 6. And I need to attack uh, the 12th. Now with the Germans. So that is going to be uh, 3 points, uh, 5. Six, yeah, so they are down to 5. 2 for the rough and 1 for attacking. And the Soviets are going to fly the last air sortie now, because if I can get an attacker stopped, then I would have really stomped the uh, attackers, the uh, the German offensive, so... Like that. Ha! Just give up! The Germans, they don't have a chance. So look at this. 4-1, cursed dice. It's kind of hard to believe that this is actually happening. Germans get plus 2 for being Germans. They get minus 1 for attacking into a rough. And um, the Soviets get plus two for air support, and that is, it's almost uh, attacker retrition, but it's not, it's attacker stopped. And I'm going to activate the Italians, and I'm just going to one, sorry, one, two, I'm going to move the Italians down here, and I'm, ah, yeah, I don't have anything to lose, they have six points left of movement. And since I don't have anything to lose, I'm going to initiate an attack on the 12th, just to see if I can take them out. Oh, it's going to be very difficult. It's across a river into the rough. So that is two for the rough and one for the river and one for attacking. So that's four points. And they had six, so they're down to two. They can only afford... This is the only attack that they're going to be able to make. And now there are no markers or anything to add. So now it's just pure rolling. Oh, finally something may happen. Let's see. But actually, I don't think it's good enough. So it's minus one for attacking into rough and minus one for attacking across a river. And <laughs> that's a nothing happens. Now we have to take up defensive positions here. So the Hungarians are going to activate and move into Kushk. And I'm going to activate this army and move them into Kharkov, paying one production point for Germany. Then I have to pay two more production points for Germany and have to move the t this tank unit. I'm just going to retreat them here so that they're in supply at least. Okay, so the Germans are finished with their operations phase. Uh, and now we look at the supplies. Uh, we can remove this low supply marker now because they are in supply. 
and now if you see here I was afraid that the 6th army would be auto supply because of the zone of control of the 12th but I can track supply lines to my own units and those lines will be unaffected by the enemy zone of control so I can easily get to here and continue back so all of my units are in supply Soviet operation phase and I think the Soviets have a good chance of winning this game now conquering the city of Kursk and probably the city of Kharkov well we'll see they're going to try to do that at least it's very tempting to try to take out the 4th Panzer here just drive down with the 5th tank and, and attack it but I'm going to be a little bit uh, sneaky paying 2 points activating the 5th tank unit 1, 2, 3 driving to Kursk and attacking the Hungarians 4, 5, 6 points and that leaves the tank unit with 4 points left now it would be nice to have to have had support a support, but I don't. So I'm going to leave it with that, and we're just going to fight this battle: Hungarians versus the Soviet Panzer. <laughs> now the Axis die has to be cursed. Look at that! A three. They're going to be thrown out of Kursk now. It's crazy stuff. The Hungarians they don't get any defense of being German because they're Hungarians. Um, the Soviets they get plus two for being tanks and then get, then they get minus one for attacking into a city yeah and that's all and what is that? that's defend the retreat the Hungarians have to leave Kursk but they will go uh, into this hex at least trying to stop their advance towards um, Kharkov these guys are taking Kursk or freeing Kursk they have 4 points left and they can attack again spending only 2 points so they'll do that here goes <laughs> ok 3-2 plus 2 for this tank thingy and that's all the modifier there is Op out in the open so there's no negative modifiers and defender have to retreat again <laughs> where now? well we have to make a gap between us and the attacking unit so I only can retreat here and these guys can take ground and they can make no they don't have enough move points to try to take Kharkov but they can spend the last two points trying to attack the Hungarians yet again and they will do that And again they get plus two modifier for being Germans and there's nothing in the defensive uh, area that can uh, aid the poor Hungarians. Defender retreat. Talk about being chased away. Now they will retreat behind Kharkov. Right, so I'm not going to take a, take ground. I'm stopping there. The fifth tank uh, unit is stopping there and are being spent. The Hungarians are being really chased away. No, Nobody else can attack Kharkov but I can bring up my armies so spending two points activating this tank army one two three four five yeah so I'm activating the, f the the first tank army one two three four um five and I spend two points attacking the reduced fort panzer three four five seven so that leaves me with three points. Oh, okay. So at least now there's some luck for the Germans. And they need luck. The Soviets get two points for being panzers. Uh, well, the Germans are also panzers and they are Germans. So that's plus four. But they are in low. Uh, they are reduced. Sorry. They are, have reduced strength. So that's minus two. So they actually managed to get an attacker stopped and they saved their lives. So the attacker is stopped. Okay, Soviets, what are you going to do next? Hmm, I'm, uh, yeah, I can't, I'm going to pay one production point, bringing them to seven. Bringing the, the Soviets down to seven points.
Um, I'm taking the 62nd. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I really want to take out that Panzer. Four points down there. Four. Um, five, six. So I have two points left. I can attack twice. It's a bit risky, but they are reduced, so there's a good chance I can do it. Oh, the Russians are infantry, so they don't get anything. But the um, Axis player, they it's a Panzer, but it's a reduced one. So we're back to six. I think that is nothing happen. Yeah, that is nothing happens. I'm just spending the last two points and attacking again. Uh oh. So they get plus two, minus two, so they're on the same spots, and these guys don't get anything, but they were able to induce a defender retreat. Defender retreat is no problem for the Panzer, they will retreat here. The 62nd, one, two, will advance. And yeah, they are spent now. I need to protect Voronezh. I'm a little bit afraid that they will just go north and take it from the 6th. So I have to activate these guys. They are the, uh, the Soviets' 6th army. One, two, three, four, five. So I can bring them down here, actually. That's five points. And they can attack the 6th German army. That's 5, 6, 7. And they will have 1 point, le point left. So, okay, so they can make 1 attack. And they will do that. Remembering to pay the T production point. It's okay. just a uh, Russian infantry or Soviet infantry. Nothing happens there with their modifier. But the German gets 2 for being Germans and they stop the attacker. The 6th is spent. But more importantly, they block the path north. I may have been a little bit too eager to advance because uh, the Germans can reinforce in this hex here. And the next turn they will go first, so they can actually then drive into Voronezh and take Voronezh. So I need to pay a production point, bringing me down to 5, and activate the Stalingrad unit and moving it up to Voronezh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, and that's spent. So I may be losing Kursk next turn because if they put on a Panzer here, they can take Kursk, but they that will be quickly retaken by these tank units here, um, because they will have to come on in a reduced state. It's only the Russian infantry that can come on in a full, uh, full state or a non-reduced configuration, so to speak. Okay. So I have five production points left for the Soviets and I need to save two of them for some infantry and if I can save three more I will have air support next turn as well so that should be five right? Mm -hmm. So I'll stop now I don't think I will do anything more with the Russians checking supplies we see that all these Soviets or not Russians of course all the Soviets are in supply track down here and up to Kursk so that's not a problem so everything is in supply that's the operations phase done all units are in supply so we skip the no supply phase the replacements phase the Germans have three points so they could either now flip this guy here into its full state or they could bring on a reduced tank unit in the next phase then they have to save the points so I think I'm better off with getting a new tank unit on the map. Don't you think? A little bit unsure about that. So I'm not doing any refitting. That's the German player. The Soviet player, no, they have all units are up to full strength, so they don't need to they don't need to refit either. That's fine. Then we are in the replacements, uh, sorry, in the upgrade phase. And the Soviets, they do have a guard unit ready for upgrade, and this do not cost any points. I'm actually upgrading the 62nd. And the reason is that they are prone for being attacked by the Panzers and the Italians here next round. So they should now be a little bit better. That's the upgrade. Germans doesn't have any upgrades, or the Axis doesn't have any upgrades. Then it's the mobilization phase. And the Germans will spend two points 
bringing them to one point to bring out the panzer unit but it has to come on in a reduced state they can mobilize along the western edge of the map Not interesting aspect here is that the mobilization can actually be in an anime zone control so i could mobilize here rather i am going to mobilize here just beside kharkov they come on in a reduced state okay that's the mobilization let me check for victory and that's almost a soviet victory but the germans are barely hanging on and now it's the end of turn phase the run marker moves down here and the tank units becomes available or uh, the tank event marker and there are some shock infantry units that are ready for being purchased i'll put them in the mobilization box oh. and the ground support marker for the Axis faction becomes available. I forgot the uh, <laughs> I completely forgot the Soviets mobilization and they will mobilize these two infantry units of course They have three production points left if you remember the original map and uh, the Soviets cannot mobilize in these hexes So they won't do that and these guys come on full strength So again, I put one in Stalingrad um, Here I think yeah Okay, so I, uh, yeah, so I didn't have to do that. I, that's was a tactical blunder. I didn't have to move the 44th up here because I couldn't just mobilize a new one here. So that will have saved me a production point. Well, anyway, I have three production points left. And with those, I'm reducing the sorties here from six to four. And that's it. Another disastrous round for the Axis faction. I don't know. Uh, they just can't seem to get this campaign going. I'm probably doing something terribly wrong. I uh, I really am a bit stumped about this, um, but um, I, I, I will, they have been rolling badly, really badly, I'll give them that. So hopefully that will turn around next round so that the game can last, last uh, further on. We are moving into October 1942, so see you back then for some winter time action. <laughs> Ooh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm.